if you watch the switch here, you can see the switch down the track, and I'm going to roll this thing over that, and you may be able to see it go to red. That just switched to red because that that magnet went over top of the reed switch going over across the thing. We'll see if we can get both of them in the camera. When this car rolls across that track, it should uh, cross that uh, reed switch. It should change to green. And it, and it did. So that's basically how you activate uh, activate these uh, reed switches. When the uh, reed switch closes, it basically closes uh, these two terminals briefly and you could actually close them by using a reed switch which is the way railroad concepts uh, kind of intends these to be used but, but alternately, as, alternately as they state in their literature you could also use a doorbell switch or an American Flyer track trip would work or a piece of wire anything that momentarily closes those those two terminals will uh, activate the thing to change state and I'll try to demonstrate that with a piece of wire uh, and get everything on the camera here. I'm gonna I'm gonna touch uh, two of the track contacts together, uh, two of the terminals together. We'll do it over here, and that should go to red when I do that. Get the correct two. There it goes to red. Right now that's that's the same thing as uh, activating that with a reed switch, just touching the terminals here together is the same thing as a reed switch closing. If I go over to these terminals and touch them, it goes back to green. If I go here, it shifts back to red. Here we're looking at the uh, drawing that's supplied by Railroad Concepts. You can actually get this off their website, but uh, this shows a switching interface module and its, its connections. You can see it's fairly simple as supplied. Uh, again, your input power comes in on these two terminals. That could be uh, AC or DC uh, between 6 and 20 volts according to the website. Uh, here's your stop sensor and you've got two wires coming in connecting to these two terminals. Here's your, your go sensor that makes it, or green sensor, go sensor that makes it, it makes the uh, train start up again and that comes in and connects to these two terminals and then uh, if this red part here this red section of track is your isolated block there's your front insulator and your back insulator you got a wire uh, let's we'll start the main line you got a wire coming in from the main line uh, through the relay points and out to the block so when the thing is green it simply feeds power in off the main line through the closed points and into the uh, block if the thing is in the, in the red these points shift the other way so that this wire is dead. And here's my version of the same hookup. There's a few more wires, but it's basically the same thing. I've added, uh, this is in the, indicating a red light and a green light. I use the other set of poles to power red light and a green light. That way I can tell, A, the things getting, the unit's getting power because I can see a, either, either a red light or a green light lit. One of those two lights is always uh, lit so I can tell the thing is getting power and B I can see what state it's in by looking at the whether the red light or the green light is uh, lit. You know over on this side there's some additional wires because I've got a rheostat uh, on there and I have created what I call a slowdown block in front of the stop block which just slows the trains down a little bit as they come into a block and that's not shown on the railroad concepts diagram. It's something you can eliminate for simplicity. It's really just an option. But it does complicate your wiring a tad. Looking at these blocks, as I said earlier, uh, basically at this gap here is where, where it's main line, back where the engine sitting is the main line, as it comes in, uh, this gap in the track starts a slowdown block. There's current always going to this section, but it goes through the rheostat so you can reduce the voltage sometimes to bring the engines in a slower speed. And the stop block comes up to here where this arrow is, which is the second gap. And that's the, the, the beginning of the on-off section. Then the on-off section uh, continues up through to this third gap, which is up, up, up here. So that's where the engines stop. OK, looking at this system here, we can see the uh, red block and the green block. The, uh, 
red block essentially is right up where the light is. I should say red track. Right here at this point is the reed switch that makes this thing go to red. Uh, over here, where this piece of green cardboard is, is a reed switch under the track that sets it to green. You can see I can pull this reed switch out. It basically just slides, in, slides under this, this helper track fairly conveniently. Uh, so when a, the magnet goes across here, it'll set the block to green. Uh, when a magnet goes across here, it'll set the block to red. Okay, the system's in operation now, uh, and you can you can slide the position of that green uh, go contact around to wherever things work best. You can get different results by putting it in different positions. It's kind of in the middle of the loop right now where the green cardboard is, and you can see the trains aren't really stopping much. Uh, they slow down as they go through the system because of the rheostat, but they're not really sitting there long. Uh, in a minute, I'll change the position of that. Incidentally, the uh, the diesel that just came onto the block, that black SW9, that's running on DC. It's actually got scale wheels and scale couplers. I purchased it secondhand off of the rivet, right off the rivet counter's layout. Uh, the steam engine just came in the view. Uh, the American Flyer Pacific, that's got a uh, half-speed S&S cam motor in it. Uh, so it's at, and it's got a DCC decoder, so uh, it, it's one of the decoders that will run on DC.